Alexa Bliss was like, I wonder if Roman Reigns asked Asamas approval for his marriage. Oh, I'm sure he did. I don't think Roman Reigns would be that reckless. You know what they say when they see meals? Which one are you? I mean, dude, Jimmy has a point. I feed a whole family with this title. Welcome, everybody, to a brand new episode of Greatness of SmackDown, your favorite SmackDown review show. How are my forehead maniacs doing? SmackDown was alright, I guess. Although I gotta say, WWE are testing my patience with this shit. This rivalry sucks. And I've just realized how much I don't like Matt Riddle. Losing sucks! Losing sucks, bro! It sucks! Losing is not Liddy, bro! I'm five! I didn't watch NXT that much. Is that his whole gimmick? Saying bro a lot and wearing sandals? That's it. And also the guy lost clean against King Corbin. Some people were more shocked than others. But in case you've all been living under a rock, losing sucks! The show kicks off with Jeff Hardy, Sami Zayn, and AJ Styles in the ring. We got a bunch of ladders. And Corey Graves announced that this is going to be a ladder match. And also it's going to feature both championships. Winner takes all. He also said there is no champion's advantage in this match because it's a ladder match. He basically said everything that we already knew. Okay. AJ says he's broken his back to make sure the title means something. I don't remember anything about AJ Styles Intercontinental Championship title reign, like nothing at all. Jeff Hardy says, well, at least me and AJ Styles tried to make the championship look prestigious. You're just pretending to be a champion, Sammy. Of course, Sammy Zayn decided to push the ladder. We got a big brawl, which actually ended with Adam Pearce saying that, you know what, Sammy, now it's a triple threat match and it's gonna happen right now. Just name him the general manager. I mean, he's the only dude who's making every decision in the WWE right now. Who's running the show? Who's running Raw? Who's running SmackDown? I don't know. Just name the guy the general manager or name me the general manager. Dude, hire me. I'm sick of guys like Matt Riddle. We need real men in the WWE, or like I've said, me. I mean, someone with so much testosterone, someone who reeks testosterone, just uh, gigantic muscles, big beard, me. Anyway, that's when we got Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn, which was actually a pretty decent match. Not quite sure if it was a good decision since we're gonna have to watch that match in a couple of days again. Not quite sure why they decided to put this match on SmackDown to open the show. It is what it is though, I mean, it was not a ladder match, so whatever, at least it was somewhat entertaining. At the end of the match, AJ Styles hits the phenomenal forearm to Hardy, but Sami steals the pin and gets the three count, so Sami Zayn wins the match, the real intercontinental champion. But after the match, AJ Styles attacks Sami Zayn and grabs both championships. Now that looks pretty sick. I can appreciate that. You know what I like about this whole thing? Corey Graves said the winner is gonna be the undisputed intercontinental champion. So it kind of makes you think that if they're gonna merge the championships, the championship is gonna mean more. Like, that's how I feel about this whole thing. Since you win both titles, of course you're gonna carry one championship. It means that these championships got merged and it's a bigger title now. Like I've said, my prediction is Jeff Hardy. I think he's gonna basically prove that he is the real intercontinental champion. But I wouldn't be surprised if AJ Styles is actually gonna win this match. Because, you know, he's the only one in this match who's not a champion, so maybe that's the story WWE are gonna try to tell. Backstage we see The Miz, John Morrison and Heavy Machinery. Otis was asked if he made a decision. He started ranting about lawyers and says they're not gonna steal his title. Tucker looks at the lawsuit papers and asks Miz why his name is the only one on the lawsuit. So then we got this brawl and I don't necessarily understand what's going on. I guess they made an error in the lawsuit. Who cares? This I, I don't even know. Is Otis gonna be the world heavyweight champion, the universal champion of SmackDown? Is he gonna take the championship from Roman Reigns? No. So why bother? Just 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 lose the, the briefcase to Morrison. 
please. We got more of Bailey talking about Sasha Banks and basically ignoring Nikki Cross. Of course, she mentioned Nikki Cross, but she knows, just like we know, this is just a filler. Look what I did to my friend Sasha. Imagine what I can do to you. What's the next big paper? Survivor Series? Well, that's the paper we need to look forward to. I got another promise. If Nikki Cross wins the women's championship against Bailey, I'll shave your ass. We got Shinsuke Nakamura vs Grand Metalik. I didn't have high expectations, but dude, I was actually surprised. That was actually a very fun match, especially the beginning of the match and the ending I appreciate. We got this kick to the back and then a Kinshasa and of course Shinsuke Nakamura wins the match. After the match, they pushed uh, Kalisto, so I guess the, the Lucha Party might be no more? I mean, nobody gives a shit, but... The only thing that I don't understand about this whole rivalry is that, okay, they're facing for the tag team championships at Clash of Champions. Does it necessarily mean that in every single match, the challengers need to lose? I think last week Lindsay lost against Cesaro, this week Shinsuke Nakamura won against uh, Grand Metalik. These dudes have no credibility right now. Jey Uso is annoying and I do understand why Roman Reigns doesn't want to hang out with him. In the previous video, I made a big mistake. I missed the last 20 seconds of SmackDown, so I didn't see Roman Reigns actually looking angry at uh, Jey Uso. And I've got a lot of comments saying the great one you did in March SmackDown's ending. And yes. Thankfully though, on this episode of SmackDown, they reminded me that 69 times. Oh, and did you guys know that Roman Reigns and Jey Uso are cousins? Maybe you missed it, I don't know. Jey Uso tried to call out Roman Reigns, basically he doesn't understand why would Roman Reigns look so angry last week. We got Matt Riddle vs King Corbin, WWE testing my patience and my ability not to sleep, you know, that was hard. But I succeeded, barely, but I did. Anyway, so we got this match, possibly one of the worst riders I've seen in a while. I really don't give a shit. But in this one, King Corbin actually won fair and square. And this triggered Matt Riddle to say, losing sucks, bro. Who's writing his promos? Who's writing this man's promos? WWE are hyping Carmella's return like she's the next Stone Cold Steve Austin. Dude, I care more about the color of my morning shit than this. We got Alexa Bliss versus Lacey Evans and... I mean, Lacey is ruined, she's basically being treated like almost a jobber. I don't know why, but that's that's what WWE are doing right now. The takeaway from this match is that during the match we heard the Fiends laugh. We saw the special effects, and it seems like The Fiend is kinda controlling Alexa Bliss. Well, some people would say it's The Fiend, we all know it's OSAMA! Yes, it's OSAMA controlling The Fiend. By the way, OSAMA is a nice guy, I actually follow him on Twitter, he follows me. And I'm not saying that just so he would allow me to be in a relationship. Not, not just because of that. Once we got The Fiend effects, Alexa Bliss was running wild on Lacey Evans, so we got a disqualification, after the match we got his sister Abigail, Alexa is leaving the arena, but we got Roman Reigns, and when Roman Reigns was posing with his championship, we saw Alexa Bliss looking at that title, and basically, if you don't get it, it's all because of The Fiend, you know, The Fiend lost the championship against Roman Reigns, so Alexa wants that title back, on the Fiend. So I guess that's the next rivalry. I mean, it's pretty obvious that Jey Uso is not winning this match. Is the Fiend gonna be a babyface? I don't imagine the Fiend Bray Wyatt as a good guy. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, but then again, The Undertaker was a babyface for, I believe, the biggest part of his career, right? And the show ended with uh, this uh, Jey Uso and Roman Reigns segment, which was actually pretty okay. What about me, Reigns? Why can't I provide for my family? Also, Roman Reigns said, I would give you the championship, but you wouldn't know what to do with it. Come on, dude, it has Velcro right now, it's easier than ever. And Jey Uso was killing it, man. He basically said, you know, you're Roman Reigns, you're the WWE Champion, Mr. WrestleMania main event, and people are asking me, which one are you? Which is kind of true, I mean, that's that was a strong promo. And as Jey Uso was leaving the ring, we got a Superman punch, and Roman Reigns basically proves, yes, he is a heel. Roman Reigns is yelling about how he feeds their entire family with this title, and you will never take my place. 
Now we know that Jey Uso will definitely not just lay down and let Roman Reigns retain the championship. It's gonna be a match and I believe it's gonna be one of the best Roman Reigns matches in the WWE. Because not only are they really gonna care about this one, they're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, Jey Uso is amazing in the ring and at least he's amazing in tag team matches. We're gonna see what this match is gonna bring us. But I'm pretty sure it has potential to be the match of the night. The show was alright. Nothing special, but better than Raw and probably because it's shorter, you know. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to check my WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2011 Road to WrestleMania series, Episode 2 and possibly 3 is already on Patreon and I will only upload these videos on YouTube once I'll finish the series and maybe even a bit later. The great one, peace, love and hugs. It's been a pleasure.